the best days of my life? Yes, because as I look across this audience of wonderful Zimbabwean faces looking back at me, I'm envying you. I'm envying you. I would do anything to be in your shoes once again, with the potential of what's ahead of you. Well, in our business, we help people accelerate to their full potential. And this is what school does. School is our opportunity to find out <coughs> what our skills are and whether we can improve and realize our full potential. Now, I remember being back at school and back in the day, what did I want to be? What was my potential? Back then I thought I was going to be an NBA All-Star. <laughs> I used to love basketball. I used to eat, breathe, sleep basketball. I used to bounce my ball to school, bounce my ball home. And when I was 11 or 12, I was good. And something happened. <clears throat> something happened when I got to your age. Suddenly my ability became limited. Why do you think? I'll ask some of the basketballers. Edward, when I heard the girl screaming your name, <laughs> this guy knows something. Edward! <laughs> My bas basketball aspirations come to an end. It's all right, you can tell me. <laughs> I didn't stop growing. I didn't stop growing. I just stopped growing upwards. I just grew outwards. <laughs> and this was a physical limitation. And since then, I've been studying that what makes the difference? between the people who excel and the people who don't quite realize their full potential. And what happens is, we start learning and we improve. We get better and better. But there comes a time when we've got better and better and better, where we get to a level. At that level we say, ah, oh, that's, as, that's as good as I'm going to be. I'm not going to get much better than this. And what we've discovered is there's actually a higher level that's much higher than our perceived level. But something stops us. Something stops us and says, ah, this is as good as I'm going to be. Now I had a, a lot of respect for the, who is, what was the name of the final young gentleman you brought? Emwa. Emwa. Yeah? So what do you do? What do you do when you're faced with an opponent who's two foot taller than you, yeah? You have to find an extra level of ability. We have to find that in ourselves. And what limits us? Well, back in the day, it was the words of other people. People said to me, hey, shorty, really? You're going to be in the NBA? They said, no one of your height has ever been in the NBA. So I listened to people. And I watched other people say, oh wow, I could never be this good. But in my company, we've been studying what sits in this space in between ability and our true ability. And overcoming the limitations, not of physical limitation, but belief. So we're going to try this out for size. When I put myself back to your days and said, oh, what was a really tough part of school? Studying for exams. And trying to remember things. Think of all the things we need to remember. Would it be useful to improve our ability to remember? Well, we're going to try this for size, because first, uh, we'll have a little challenge. We'll call it a memory challenge. How good are you at remembering things? Yeah, right now you might be sitting there thinking, yeah, I'm good at remembering stuff. Well. The world isn't happy with that. We need to prove our abilities. So here's a little challenge. I'm going to introduce five items. And your challenge is just to be able to remember those five items in a minute's time. <coughs> the first is a welcome mat. The second, it's a dolphin. The third is a dog. The fourth is a gold coin. And the fifth, it's a boxing glove. Five items. That can't be too hard, right? 
<laughs> so that's why I was by show of hands. Who will remember five items in one minute? Come on, come on, chaps. <laughs> five items, yes? Good. <laughs> So, all right, all right, so I'm seeing people who are saying, yes, I have a perception of my ability, I will remember five. Good. So, remember that, because let's increase the challenge, just a little bit. So, five items, let's add the following items to the list. It's a name badge. A green Monopoly house, if you've ever played Monopoly. We have a men at work sign. A fireplace. A portrait. <laughs> Some airline tickets, a golf club, a light bulb, some seeds, a watering can, the Incredible Hulk, the concise Oxford Dictionary, a walkie-talkie, Buzz Lightyear, and a wristwatch. So those, there are 20 items there. Now we're testing that. Remember we said, we get to a level of ability and we say, hey, that's as good as I'm going to get. Because, hey, 20 items, that's too difficult to remember, right? So this is now where we look at, well, what takes us to the next level? A little bit of belief. Um, I might share a little bit of knowledge with you that might help. And this is what we've studied. In our company, we've been studying what is it that allows us to accelerate to another level of the ability. And you might think, hey, 20 is a lot. So let's see um, whether we can tackle this challenge. 20 items. Now, one of the reasons why we have this limiting level of perceived ability is because the way we choose to remember at the moment is not the most efficient way. The human mind is not good at remembering numbers and words. Why? Because they're an invention. They're a human invention that we use to be able to communicate. The human mind is really good at remembering images. So remembering pictures on a screen, and if they're connected in some way, the human mind has an unlimited ability to remember items. So our challenge is in, let's make it realistic, right? in three minutes time to remember all 20 in order. In order, yeah. So right now, we're first just gonna test the, the attitude and the belief. Who believes that in three minutes time they will remember all 20 items in order? Please, please raise your hands. All right. Now these are the people to have a belief something's going to happen. Something's going to happen in the next two minutes that in three minutes' time, I'll be able to do something that I'm not sure I can do right now. So we're going to try this for size. We said that the human mind remembers images far better than words and numbers, so that's what we'll do. And if the image is slightly unusual, slightly different, it remembers them even more powerfully. So this is our chance. Remember, who, re who recalls the first item? Please shout out. Uh, hand up when that is. Young lady. It's a welcome mat. Now, most of us will have a welcome mat outside the front door. What color is the universal color of welcome mats? Brown. Brown. You see, the mind doesn't like it when it's the same as we expect. It likes it to be a little different. So, young lady, let's make this welcome mat a different color, something unusual. What color shall we make it? It's turquoise. So imagine in your mind, sometimes it helps. Some people can picture things better when their eyes are closed. So imagine a turquoise welcome mat. The second item, it's a dolphin. A dolphin is diving over the welcome mat, the turquoise welcome mat. Picture it in your mind because you can see little droplets of water falling onto the welcome mat from this dolphin. Who remembers the third item? That it was a dog. Picture a dog surfing. <laughs> now believe me, I don't want to do this just because it's embarrassing. Because it's embarrassing. But what happens is when the mind sees something or something a little bit silly, a little bit funny, it remembers it even more powerfully. So, on the back of the dolphin is a dog. 
and you notice something unusual about this dog. In his paws, he opens one paw, and what is there? Ah. On the other paw, what is there? A boxing glove. So picture this in your mind. Welcome mat, turquoise, dolphin diving over the welcome mat. Dog surfing on the back, in one hand, a gold coin. The other hand, so, all together, first item. Just shout it out. Shout it out. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. The boxing glove is punching. Punching a name tag. The name tag has your name on it. So picture this in your mind. The boxing glove is punching the name tag, your name on it, but the name tag isn't on your, your blazer. It's on the door of the green Monopoly house. Yeah, so the name tag, your name on the door of the green Monopoly house. We walk through the door into the green Monopoly house. In front of us, we have to dodge a big swinging sign. What's on the sign? Men at work. So we dodge the men at work sign. And then we're in the house. In front of us, what do we see? We see a fireplace. It's a nice warm fireplace. Not something you need in Zimbabwe, but in London, we need a warm fireplace. We walk to the fireplace. What do we notice on top? Yes. It's a portrait. Not of the Simpsons. It's a portrait of your family. They're smiling back at you. Why? Because you're doing so well at school and they're proud. <laughs> the portrait is pinning to the fireplace two airline tickets. Where are they going? I'm going to ask one of your teachers. Madam, where are these airline tickets going? Anywhere in the world. Where would you like to go? United States. United States. Now, please remind me of your teacher's name. Miss? Cassandi. Miss? Cassandi. Cassandi. <laughs> Did I get that right? No? Please, what is it? Cut sun. Yes. Yes. And where is she going? Yes. Who is she going with? Who, who are you going with? Any person in the world? Your daughter. Ah, this is Sandy. What is your daughter's name? Rit? Ritino. <laughs> so remember who is going? She's going to the United States, which place, which, which city? Atlanta. Atlanta in the United States, two tickets. Who's going? <laughs> and? <laughs> Good, remember those details. The mind loves details. Next to the fireplace, leaning against it, is a golf club. No ordinary golf club. It's a solid gold golf club. We figure ourselves to be a bit of a tiger wood, so we pick up the golf club. We take a swing, but we didn't know that above us, what was there? A light bulb. So we swing and we smash the light bulb into a thousand pieces. The pieces, they come raining down from the roof onto the floor where they form a pile of seeds. What is watering the seeds? It's a watering can. Yeah? So picture this in your mind, watering can. Now let's add a little detail. On the watering can, there's a motif of a flower. Yeah, a motif of a flower. And when I thought of a beautiful flower, I thought of this young lady sitting here, and she'll tell me, what kind of flower is on this watering can? It's a rose. So there's a motif of a rose on this watering can. Next item, who's watering the watering can? None other than the Incredible Hulk. The Incredible Hulk is watering the watering can, but you notice that he has two big bulges in his pockets. <laughs> yeah? Because if he pulls out one big bulge, what is it? It's the concise Oxford Dictionary. <laughs> Remember, the other bulge, he pulls it out, what is it? It's a walkie-talkie. And he's getting a call on the walkie-talkie. Who's he getting a call from? Buzz Lightyear. And Buzz Lightyear says, look Hulk, we're not on Zimbabwe time now. You're late because on the final item, 
It's the stopwatch. What time is it? Sir, what time is it on the stopwatch? Any time you want. Yes, you. Yes. What time? It's 10 o'clock. Those are the 20 items. Now our challenge is to see whether we can remember them all in order. So what will happen, just in a few seconds, just with the person next door to you, each of you will have one minute. Ooh, just not yet. <laughs> one minute to recall as many items as you can. You can either do two minutes. Start now. just see. Um, let's all commit, we can all remember five, yes? yes? So what I'll ask is, everybody will raise our hands at five, then I'll increase the number. Yeah? When we get to the number that's your limit, please lower your hand. And we'll see which hands are still raised when we get to the upper limit. So everybody, please, raise your hands. Yeah? So we said five, yes we can do when I get to the number and I'll increase it, just to lower your hand. So, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. No hands going down yet? <laughs> 50, 60, really? 70, 80, 19, 20. Now, are you sure? <laughs> there is still some standing. We need two people. Yes. <laughs> this is when the hands come down. <laughs> Madam, you will be one of them. And let's have this interesting dynamic. We have somebody representing the female camp. And we have a young gentleman there who will be representing the male camp. So, we're going to test out the performance. Not in the chair there. Here. <laughs> Embrace the challenge. Yeah? Please, uh, young man, would you come to the front of the room? Uh, let's give him a little applause. Thank you. What's your name, young man? Mars. Now, step one. The hardest challenge is to come up here, have 200 faces looking at you, whilst you're going to do something that's challenging. So first, testament to the courage of this young man. But now we've got to see is the performance there. So, just give us the items. Number one. What color? Would you speak? I've got a really loud, booming voice, so you might have to speak up just a little so the folks at the back can hear. First item. Welcome, Matt. Color. Turquoise. Next item. Dolphin. Next item. Dog. Next item. Um, yeah. Coldplay. Yes. Next item. Boxing gloves. Next item. Name tag. Next item. Monopolyals. Next item. Walking side. Next item. Uh, fireplace. Next item. Portrait. Next item. Uh, airline ticket. Where are they going? United States. Which city? Atlanta. Who's going? Muscatani. Who with? With the daughter. Ah. <laughs> the daughter, she has a name? Ah, right. 
Next item. Golf club. Next item. Ball. Next item. Hey, you had the chance. You had the chance. Yeah? In the seat, everybody's the expert. It's here where we deliver the performance. So please. Seat. Next item. Hulk. No. Yeah, close, just before the Hulk. What connected the Hulk to the seats? Okay. Yes. A little challenge for you. There was a motif of a flower. What was the flower? Uh, rose. Thank you. So we got to the Hulk. Next item, nearly there. Dictionary. Next item. Um, Next item. Bug. Next item. Stop watch. Time. Telephone. Well done. <laughs> and you saw there, there was a moment. Yeah? A moment of doubt. And with any performance, if we're going to tr truly reach our full potential, there will be moments of doubt. And that's when, for this young man, the belief kicked in. Yes, I can do this. That thing will come. And it came. So we've had one demonstration now. Oh, this next demonstration, we have to raise the challenge just a little bit. Young lady, we're going to do this in reverse order. <laughs> Please. <laughs> so please, uh, what's your name? Magina is going to start with the <laughs> Martina. <laughs> Martina will start with the final item, please. Stopwatch. Time. 10 o'clock. Stopwatch, 10 o'clock. Good. Next item. Uh, the walkie-talkie. Just before that. Shh. Give her the look of your support and she will deliver the performance. Yeah? So, who is calling on the walkie-talkie? Uh, Sam. Yes, Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> So, then the next item. Walkie-talkie. Next item. Oxford Dictionary. Next item. Hulk. Yes, next item. Washing can. Color, oh. What was the flower on there? Rose. Next item. The seeds. Next item. The light bulb. Next item. The golf club. Next item. The airline tickets. Next item. The portrait. Now, just before, the, uh, after the golf club, we had a light bulb, portrait, airline tickets. Where are they going? Atlanta. Who's going? Ms. Katsane and her daughter. Richard. Good. Next item. Last thing, we were at the portrait. Portrait, the fireplace. Yes, next item. Minute work sign. Next item. Monopoly house. Next item. Uh, It'll come. Just give her the look of your support from in those seats. The name tag? Yes. Then before. Boxing bag. Next item. The dog. Next item. Oh, the gold coin? Yes. The dog? Yes. The dolphin and the mat. What color? <laughs> That's the way. Martina, well done. So this, this was just a little bit of fun. But what we've discovered is, if you can do this, just in three minutes, because some fella at the front told you a little technique about remembering, what else can we do? What else sits in this space? that we could be doing at our full potential. So, yes, right now, if I could be in the NBA, dunking baskets, I would like to. Fortunately, I've discovered other things that better tap into my full potential. But lately, I found out about a little certain someone who is the shortest man who can dunk a basketball. What do you think his height is? The height of the shortest man who can dunk a basketball. So, the height, would you believe, is five foot seven. Shorter than me, shorter than the young man who gave a fantastic performance at the basketball. You don't believe me? Let's have a look. This isn't Photoshop. This isn't CGI. Spud, 
Spud Webb. Yeah? If you want to know how he achieved this, then there's some really inspirational little videos of what it took for him to overcome everybody else's perception that no man under six foot would dunk a basketball. So the next time, Spud Webb is his name. So the next time someone says, you can't, it's because of their limitations, not ours. And I, I heard a wonderful thing about one of your mottos on the way to school. And I heard that um, freedom through education. You come from a place that has had many challenges. And the world has heard about those challenges. But the freedom through education is why all the adults in this room envy where you are now. The potential for reaching your true potential and ability is unlimited. So, tap into that potential, and um, they say if you can dream it and believe it, you can achieve it. So, uh, we look forward to hearing wonderful stories of you achieving your dreams. Enjoy the rest of your day.